respond to you. Okay, let's go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who's a busy bee? Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, take over. Do your thing. Okay, let me open a scripture page. Oh no, I just closed down my scripture page. Okay, just now. Let me just open my scripture page. Here we go. Hallelujah, Father. I need music. I need some kind of... <laughs> Not cool. Just a second. I don't know what's all this I'm hearing in the back here. It's not working for me right now. Okay, give me give me some some kind of music. Some good music. Okay, let's go. Okay, Father. Okay, I hear. Okay, where's my scripture page? The man shouted all the more. The man shouted all the more. Mark 10, verse 48. Mark 10, verse 48. Whoa. Here we go. Mark 10, 48, verse 47 to 49, and it says, When he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We're going, and it will come to pass. Hi, Mark. And it will come to pass that I will rise up the king for David on his throne. We don't want to get locked up. Okay. You know, FB likes to, to block me so many times. Okay, here we go. Okay, and I heard, and it will come to pass that will rise up a king for David on his throne. So we're going there. On his throne. Okay, so we can read um, 2 Samuel 7 verse 12. So we're reading 11 to 13. I feel a little bit lightheaded, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm ideally ice cream shake. Second Samuel seven verse eleven to thirteen. We have and have done this and have done this and have done since the day what is going on? Okay. And have done Second Samuel verse um, chapter seven, verse eleven to thirteen, and have done, and have done since the day I appointed you judges. I appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. Not some, all. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that He Himself will establish a house for you, and when your days are fulfilled. And your rest, and you rest with your fathers. I will raise up your offspring after you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. And you will build a house in my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So that was a promise of God to Abraham. Even remember that his descendants will will be forever. Um, when he said he will raise up. 
this out. I gotta go again into Jeremiah 23. 23.5. We just read 2 Samuel 7. Well, Jeremiah 23.5. And it says, reading from verse 4, I will raise up shepherds over them who will tend them. And they will no longer be afraid or dismayed, nor will any go missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he will reign righteous he will reign wisely as king and administer justice and righteousness. And of course we know the Lord is our righteousness. And we see here in Jeremiah 33, verse 16, from 15 to 17 onwards, we read, In those days and at that time, I will cause to sprout a righteous branch of David, and he will administer justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell securely and this is the name by which she will be called the Lord our righteousness so check this out her dwelling place what would she be called the Lord our righteousness the name of the city will be called the Lord our righteousness this guitar thing is getting to me here give me a headache Okay, so she'll be called the Lord, our righteousness, because it's God. Remember, the Bible says, he who was without sin became sin for us. So which one are we talking about here? New Jerusalem. He who was without sin became sin for us, that in him and through him, we are the righteousness of God. We might become the righteousness of God. Second Corinthians 5, 21. Reading from verse 20 to 21. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God was ma were making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. God made him who knew no sin, to be sin for us on our behalf, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So when Jeremiah 33 speaks of that place called the Lord our righteousness, who is there? God is there. And of course the people who have received him are there, because he who became sin for us, okay? Um, we're reading in those days of that time I will cause us to sprout a righteous branch of David and that street one street is called street and one is called beauty we're going there one street is called street I think it's street right one street is called straight and one is one is called beauty I hear that one is called straight and one is called beauty Acts 9 11 Verse 10 to 12, and it says in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias, and the Lord spoke to him in a vision. Ananias, here I am, Lord, he answered. No.
Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Isaiah. This is the call of Isaiah, right? Send me to the the, the coastlands and the Caribbean Isles, the Isles of the Sea. Okay. So first thing I'm reading is Isaiah six eight. Reading from verse seven to nine. Oh. Isaiah 6, verse 8 to 9, and it says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And he replied, Go and tell these people, tell this people, Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. And remember, he said, It is true what Isaiah said of you. Seeing you don't see, and hearing you don't hear. It is true what is spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Prophet, seeing the good see. Now, because God has put that blind on them, okay? So it is true what they say was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Seeing they don't see and hearing they don't hear. Isaiah 42, 20. Reading from verse 19 to 21. Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf like the messenger I am sending? Who is blind like my covenant partner? Or blind like the servant of the Lord? Though seeing many things, you do not observe. Though your ears are open, you hear nothing. The Lord was pleased for your sake. For the sake of his righteousness to magnify his law and make it glorious. God actually said that there. He magnified his law. Okay, second coming down into Matthew. Matthew 13, verse 14. That's what I was looking for. Where Isaiah the prophet spoke. Okay, here we go. This is why, verse 13 to 15, this is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, as in the physical, they do not see. Though hearing, as in the physical, they do not hear, as in the spiritual. In them, the prophecy of Isaiah, let's first read there. Isaiah 6, 8. And it says, in, the, in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. Seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has grown callous. You know what callous is, right? Heart. Like that thing that you get when you don't um, cut your nails or clean your nails and it just becomes hard like that. You know, in, it says, for this people's heart has grown callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they close their eyes. Speak to us with itching ears. We're going with itching ears right now. Ooh, here's what he's saying. Oh, oh, I don't want to miss that. Wait, wait. When I said itching ears, he said something. Wait. Ah, okay. Being eye pleasers of men. I hear loving, be cold. Rabbi, oh, ooh, check this out. Okay, wow. Okay, where, where am I with this? Seeing they don't see, hearing they don't hear. Okay. So, and their eyes are closed. They don't want to see what's in front of them, right? So when Jesus was on the cross, what happened? They esteemed him not. Why? Because esteeming him would take away their titles. They esteemed him not. They didn't get it because receiving him would mean what? Would mean that they, them, as as what they were doing there, they weren't needed anymore. But if they had given into God, but again, this is a plan that they're blind that we could see, and then 
you know, he'll come and let them see. So the fullness of the Gentile has to come in. All right. Isaiah 53, 3. He was this. We're reading from verse 2. Sorry. My eggs and milk and, and sugar. That's what ice cream is, right? He grew up before him a tender shoot. Like a root out of dry ground. He had no stately form or majesty to attract us. Aha. Uh -huh. So look at this. How God came. He didn't come as a kingly king of the earth. He didn't come with a robe and a crown and stewards everywhere and, and just no. He grew up as a tender shoot out of dry ground. What does that mean? Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Okay. So he came as a tender shoot, meaning he was gentle, he was loving, he was kind. He came to show how the kingdom of heaven is ruled. And But look where he's coming from. Nazareth. So Nazareth was not a good place, okay? I heard him say, can anything good come from Nazareth? So we're going into John 1, 46. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, we found the one... Moses wrote about in the law, the one the prophets foretold, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So he's bearing witness of him. We found him. And then Nathaniel, here's what Nathaniel saying. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Nathaniel asked, come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Why did he say that? So Nathanael, he heard the report, but now he's doing something. He's searching out the matter. And the Bible says, It's the glory of God to hide things. But the it's the honor of God. It's glory of God to hide things, but the honor of kings to search out matter. Right? It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings to search it out, or something like that. Okay, we'll find it. Proverbs twenty-five two. Nathaniel heard the report from Philip. He didn't just say, well, nothing could come out of Nazareth. He went to see himself. Okay? These are additional these are additional proverbs 25, verse 1 to 3. These are additional proverbs of Solomon, which were copied by the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter back to Senda, Shekaraya, Rakambuhu, Shizdai, Lema Kikereya, Akumashana, the Zaka Boho back to sender now I'm getting a headache it, these are additional proverbs of Solomon which were copied by the men of Hezekiah king of Judah it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out as the heavens are high and the earth is deep so the hearts of kings cannot be searched. Is God searchable? No, he's an unsearchable God. He's vast. He's everlasting. He's a, there's no end to his glory. Psalms 95.3 gives us a glimpse. Reading from verse 2 to 4. And it says, let us enter his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him in a song. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. 
Woo! Did you feel that? For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In His hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountains peak belongs to Him. Give me a second. One moment, please. And then Job 5.9. Come on. Job 5.9, reading from verse 8 to 10. However, if I were you, I would appeal to God. I would what? I would appeal to God. Why? And they might cause down before him. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Yes, Father. All have sinned. And have fallen short. And I hear him say something as well. Wait. Ah. Oh. All our righteousness are filthy rags before him. Which one first? Okay. Isaiah 64 6. All the righteousness was filthy rags before him. We're reading from verse 5 to 7. You welcome those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. Surely you were angry for we sinned. Look at this. Surely you were angry for we sinned. How can we be saved if we remain in our sins? Point. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like a polluted garment. We all wither like a leaf, and our iniquities carry us away like the wind. Remember that? Man is like grass. Psalms 103, 15, reading from verse 14 to 16. We have enough, RC. Okay, so we have enough, RC. Oh, yeah? Psalms 103, 15. And it says, verse 14 to 16, For he knows our frame. He is mindful that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He blooms like the flower of the field. When the wind has passed over, it vanishes, and its place remembers it no more. Excuse me. That's why Jesus said, um, the dead know nothing. Their thoughts perish, their actions perish, their words perish, everything perishes about the dead. He is mindful that we are just. Remember Job, Job said, um, why is God mindful of dust? So we need to come down to, from here, here all of us on the same level you know why none of us are immortal not yet none of us are immortal none of us are going to live forever when jesus comes and the resurrection happens and we receive our glorified body then we're going to be immortal but in the meantime we are just a walking around pile of dust filled with his spirit and if we are uppity in ourselves or, or um, exalted in ourselves, then guess what? He could say enough of that. He could take back his spirit. And even so, but he can, I mean, that'll be the end of us, right? That'll be the end of our story. So God wants us to come down to that level in the way that he is God. All right. Um, where am I? Okay. We are in the last thing I read was Isaiah, I think. 
yes, Isaiah, right? Isaiah. So God says, who shall I send? Who will go for us? And of course, it says, go and tell the people because seeing they don't see, hearing they don't hear. And then he said, he confirmed it. He said, Isaiah spoke truly about you because your heart are like callous. So you see him on the cross. You see the Messiah before you, but you will not receive him. Why? Because it takes away from your title. If he is all things and we proclaim him as all things and the Messiah, when he comes, then we don't need the temple sacrifice. Then the chief priests will lose their titles. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the people will begin to follow Jesus. And we can't have that happening. That's what they said, right? So they paid Judas off. So Matthew 13, 14, 13 to 15, and it says, this is why I speak to them in parables. Because seeing, they don't see. If the thing is right there in front of you, and you refuse to see it, you will not see it. But if I give you a parable, then your mind is going to search it. What does it really mean? And the more you think, what does it really mean? Father is going to say, let me reveal it to you. Let me cut it down for you. Let me break it down for you. Because he is the teacher. So if you really desire to know what it means, that's to say you're calling the teacher to teach you. Because you'll begin to search. And the Bible says, if you search, you will find me. I know it's been on my head today, but all right. Um, if you search for me, you'll find me. Jeremiah 29, 13. Reading from verse 12 to 14. And it says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I'll listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So if Jesus spoke something to us in a parable, like he always does, and we really search for him, will we find him? Yes, we'll find him. Okay, we, we'll search out the matter. Remember he said that somewhere in one of those windows. Okay, I will, I'm sorry. You will, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Verse 14 of Jeremiah 29. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will restore you from captivity and gather you from all the nations and the places which I have banished you, declares the Lord. So God has them walking in blindness right now that they may desire to see. I will restore you to the place from which I sent you into exile. Who's he talking about? Remember he said, um, the tribes of Israel that he scattered. Especially. Cause them to return to their land. Their land. Ezekiel. I want the one in Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel. Yep, Ezekiel. I hear him saying Ezekiel. So we're going into Ezekiel eleven seventeen. Therefore, reading from verse 16 to 18. Therefore, declare that this is what the Lord God says. Although 
I sent them far away among the nations and scattered them among the countries. Yea, for a little time, a little while, I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries to which they have gone. God is protecting them. Therefore, declare that this is what the Lord God says. I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you from countries to which you have been scattered. And I will give you back the land of Israel. When they return to it, he's going to, yeah, he's going to bring them up. When they return to it, what will they do? What will they do? They are coming with the truth. They will remove all its detestable things and all its abominations. Okay, now hear this. Remember in Ezekiel 9, where, where God says, um, go through the city and place a mark on the foreheads of all who are crying out for the abominations being done in the city. Hmm. Ezekiel 9. Verse 1 onwards, he cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gates, which glide towards the north, and every man a slaughter wet hand. Like Joshua, Papa. And one man among them was clothed with linen. Remember the righteousness of the saints and linen of the bride, right? And one man among them was clothed with linen and with a writer's ink worn by his side. And they went in and stood besides the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. The threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the right of ink on by his side. All right. That's like John, when he sees and he's writing. Um, I'm sorry, where are we? Okay, verse four. And the Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. I hear him say, and the angel swung the sickle. Grapes, grapes, grapes of the earth. And the angel swung the sickle and got the grapes. Something like that swung the sickle and got the grapes, throwing it into the wine press of God. You know what must happen to grapes so to become wine, right? Crushed completely. Revelations 14, 19. Verse 18 to 20. Still another angel with authority over the fire came from the altar. Remember this fire, this altar is before the throne. And called out in a loud voice to the angel with the sharp sickle. Swing your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the vine of the earth. 
because its grapes are ripe. This is evil. This is this is every abominable thing. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and gathered the grapes of the earth, and he threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They're crushed because they didn't receive him. Remember, he was crushed for us. Remember, the Bible cautions us and calls us in and tells us that we are persecuted but not forsaken, pressed down but not crushed. Why are we not crushed? Because Christ was crushed for us. Remember when blood leaked out of his veins in Gethsemane? Remember that was the crushing. He became our sin right there. And he was feeling every possible thing of every single soul that would be facing this world and tribulation. And every soul on the earth, every single thing. And blood began to pour through his veins. Um, through his pores, his sweat became his blood. The pressure thing was so great, it was a crushing. He was crushed. Okay, 2 Corinthians 4, 8. So in the garden of the olives, the olive was crushed to give us the olive oil. Amen? Which is the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 4, 8. Reading to 7 to, to 9, um, to 8, to 9. Sorry, on onwards. Now, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. Now we have this treasure in jaws of clay. Yes, we do. Remember what I said before? That we are dust of the earth and his spirit is in us. Now we have treasure in jars of clay to show this, what? This surpassingly great power is from the Most High. From God and not from us. Who's to receive the glory? God. Again. Second Corinthians 4 verse 7. Take it in. Now we have this treasure in jars of clay. Which is the spirit of God. The breath of life. Even. Okay. To show this surpassingly great power. What's surpassing the great power, surpassing overcoming everything, is from God and not from us. We are pressed on all sides, but we're not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but we're not destroyed. All right. That's a whole other thing, but I wonder if I ever did I think I did. I did a similar, I don't know if I did a similar or not. Okay. Anyway, so here's, here's what's happening. The angel is reaping the grapes from the vine of the earth in the city. All the abominable things are being cleansed. Well, the, 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 the people who are committing the crime against God. They're being slain in no nice way, okay? All right, verse 5. Okay, verse 4. Let's read again. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark on the foreheads of the men that sigh. You know when you're frustrated, when you're under stress, you sigh that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Verse 5, And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Do you think when the angel is receiving the call from the one from the altar that's before the throne of God, that is the judge seated on the judgment seat, harvest time, Clear out. He, he, you think he, he has pity? He's there for one thing and one thing. Well, that's his function. Here's what he says. Um, 
having no pity. Verse 6, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but do not come upon any man whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Hint, hint. Begin at my sanctuary. Now, Father was showing me something. Um, as I read the scripture, I'm going to come back to it. But he showed me the love of titles. Just like the Pharisees and the chief priests and the Sadducees, they didn't want to receive Jesus. They didn't want to esteem him because esteeming him would mean a taking away of their titles. He showed me um, that in churches, yeah, today, churches, our churches, uh, all churches, that there are people with high titles, you know, they want to be esteemed. So instead of giving God the glory of the things that they're supposed to do, they give themselves the glory that people would esteem them. Which is hard and sad. Um, so for example, Jesus is the high priest. Jesus is the high priest in the sanctuary of heaven. He's blotting out our sins as we speak. Amen? He's blotting out our sins. And there are some sectors of paganism mixed with Christianity. They're pagan. That are calling um, claims on a priesthood. Like, for example, the Mormon church. They call claims on a priesthood and they say men can give this. But Jesus is the high priest and a higher covenant has come. So it's no longer man giving it, it's God giving it. If you're blood bought and if you're Holy Spirit filled, what are you? The Bible tells us plainly, you are a holy nation, a holy people. A chosen generation, a royal priest. Good. All right, we're going back into my scripture page. Where's my scripture page at? This is not just for the Mormons. This is for others as well. Because there are people holding titles of father. God says, call no one father. Call no one father. None, no one. But they're calling him father. Call no one teacher. They say, well, he's my spiritual father. God is a spirit, people. God is a spirit. He's sovereign spirit. He is our spiritual father. Do not rob God of his titles. Now, you can be, if you say that you are a, uh, I don't even know what you can say there. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never, I've received that conviction so strong that we are not to be called teachers. We're not to be called father. Okay? Now, if you take the titles and you place them on someone and, well, this is how churches are, are established. And yes, there is an organization. There is a, a perfect order. But God be the glory alone. There's no prophet exalted. Moses part the sea. We don't sing, oh, hail Moses. Abraham. Abraham was a friend of God. We don't glorify Abraham. Enoch. We don't sing, oh, hail Enoch. We, we don't bow down before men. We bow down before God. And God is very, very particular about this. This is what he's trying to teach the disciples here now. Now, in all the things, in all 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 the things that God is doing. He uses some vessels for good and some for dishonor. Some for honor and some for dishonor. Now, when God is using these vessels, who's using these vessels? God is using these vessels. Why? Because we are clay and He is the presence of life in us. He is the essence of what brings this body together. He's the essence of life itself. We are not our own. Some people seem to forget that we are not breathing on our own. 
They're buying in the lies of the scientists. Evolution, nothing. If the creator says today, that's your last day, the breath of life will leave you. You will not get up from your bed. That's it. It's done. He permits, he permits that breath inside. Why are you robbing father of his glory? So that's the thing that's going on today. And the Bible tells us that in the last days, men will become lovers of themselves and boasters and conceited and every other thing that you could think of. Shall we go there? When he says, begin at my sanctuary, where is the Lord's sanctuary? The church. Begin at my church because there are abominable things being committed in the church and nobody is stepping up by the Bible to give the truth so that they can prepare the crooked way straight. Nobody's doing it. And those who are doing it, those who are calling them out, they're being kicked out. Jesus said, you'll be hated for my namesake. You'll be hated for my namesake. Come bearing the truth. And the Bible says in Galatians 4.16, Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So, there is a... There is, a, just like they didn't want to esteem Jesus on the cross as the Messiah. You know, they said, save yourself. You say that you're the Son of God. Save us and, and come down from the cross. And they mocked him and they reviled him. Satan is so dumb. He thinks that he's running things when things are happening, but he's not running things. God is. God is about to show up and show off. All right. We're looking at where he said in Ezekiel 9, he said, begin at my sanctuary. So things are happening in the church that people aren't paying attention to because people aren't reading the Bible. What are people doing? They are following the pastor, the reverend, the, the prophet, the, the apostle, the bishop. They're following men and not following God. Now, some are, and some. that's why the churches are becoming empty. Because they realize that it's all about money and exaltation of self and not about the things of God. Because God alone... To God alone be the glory. To God alone be the glory. Amen. So we're coming into um just give me um a little loud. Okay. Give me um what was the scripture that we started with? Oh, do not rejoice. That the demons subject to you in my name. Or rather rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Do not rejoice that the demons submit to you. Luke 10, 20. We're calling, we're, we're, we're calling um, to eat a piece of humble pie right now. And there's enough to go around. This humble, we, we named it grace. God named it grace. God gave it. He baked it. He put the sweetest things in it. Ah, it's the most tastiest pie you'd ever eat. It's called, take a piece of humble pie right now. This is for all the leaders. <laughs> all the, the ones who hold the titles and the, the uppity ones. And the ones who say, oh, they run things. God is saying, you don't run things, honey. All your righteousness are as filthy rags before me. Whatever you call yourself, apostle, doctor, bishop, pastor, prophet, you could take all the fivefold, all the fivefold names from the ministry, um, all the, the, the names, the titles. At the end of the day, all your righteousness are as filthy rags before me. Luke 10, 19 to 21. And it says, see, see, the first thing he says is, see, 
Because seeing they don't see and hearing they don't hear. You blind guides. You're, you're leading people into a ditch. Because you're teaching them your way and not God's way. You're teaching them things that exalt you. Things that don't bring glory to God. So what is the point of having church if the church is exalting not God? Okay, so he says see. The first thing he says is see. Why? Why would God say see if you're seeing already? It means that you're blind. Here's what he says. See, I have given you authority. Please see. Know that. Spiritual eyes. Open now. I have given you authority to tread on the snakes and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Glory, hallelujah. We rejoice. Yes? All power is in the name of who? Carrie? No. The name of Joshua? No. The name of David? No. The name of who? The name of Isaiah? Ah, no. All power is in the name of Jesus. All power is in the name of Jesus. Nothing will harm you. Glory, hallelujah. And then, nevertheless, even though, here's what he's saying. Even though you have all power in me, even though, I love the fire. <laughs> even though. Even though you can do all things in me. Even though you'll do the miracles. Even though you'll prophesy. Even though you'll preach. Even though you can cast out a demon. Even though. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirit or the demons submit to you why but but oh come on i just pray for that man and, 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 and a demon flew out to him i just prayed for that man and a demon came out of him who did it where's the mention of it i just prayed for that man in the name of jesus and Jesus cast the demon out. You see how you see the difference? He says, Do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you or the demons submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Now, the Bible says, Those who were predestined. We're going there. It's one of my favorite verses. I don't even know where it is. Those who are predestined Romans 8 30 why because blessed are they whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life from when from before the foundations of the world we know father that is okay when you know him your eyes open remember in luke 24 um 30 to 33 ish where they were walking on the road and when he revealed the scriptures then their eyes were open and they said didn't it burn in us that when he read the scriptures and our eyes were open romans 8 30 and it says for god foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he would be a firstborn among many brothers for those god foreknew he also predestined he already planned it to be conformed to the image of jesus so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and those he predestined, he also called. Remember, we were looking at Isaiah and he said, Who shall I send? Who shall we send for us? And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. Because it's by grace, not works, 
least any man should boast that we are saved. What are we coming down to? Those he called, he also justified. Where? On the cross. He said, now judgment has come. Now the prince of this world is cast out. John 12. And John 12, 30, I think. Okay, let's go. And what then shall we see in response to those things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. So he, he brings, let's read where he's talking to the disciples again. Luke 10, 20. See, now see, because you know me. I have given authority in my name. I, I have given authority in my name to tread on the snakes and the scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing can harm you. Great. Why? Because I'm with you. Because you have authority in my name. Because I am your safe tower. Because the spirit in you is greater than he who is outside. Whatever it is that's outside. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. No. It's not you. It's not the image of you. It's not you as in you, that person. It's you filled up with the spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God inside of you that is moving as a light, as a fire that the demons see and they know. And again, that spirit man came from God because it's Jesus Christ. They say, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? We're going there right now. Jesus I know and Paul I know or Paul we know Jesus we know and Paul we know but who are you? the sons of Sceva I think Ow. Acts 19.5 that hurts okay Acts 19 Acts 19 verse 15 sorry Reading from verse 14 to 16. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. What were they doing? Let's go back a few. They were praying. They were praying in the name of Jesus. Just a second, okay? Okay, so verse 13, there were some interim Jews, exorcists, who tried to invoke the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord Jesus, over those with evil spirits. They would say, I bind you by Jesus, who Paul proclaims. Seven sons of Sceva. A Jewish chief priests were doing this. Eventually, one of the evil spirits answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, I know about Paul. But you, who are you? Aha. So remember what I just said about Jesus in us? It's the spirit of God that they bow to, amen? It's not us. It's the Spirit of God. It's Jesus himself in our bodies because this is his vessel. He came down as the man Jesus. He died for us on the cross. He rose again to give us the victory, to give us the gift of his Spirit that when we go out into the world, no longer are they seeing us, but they're seeing him. Okay. So verse 16, 
the man with the evil spirit jumps on them. So they're trying to exercise this demon out of this man. And this man jumps on them and overpowered them. And the attack was so violent, they ran out of the house naked and wounded. These are the dangers of invoking the name of Jesus and not knowing him. So this is what some people are doing. And they're following. Some people have gone to follow after the Jewish ways. But they don't. They just want to follow in that. How to say. We are inwardly Jews. And it's what we should be doing. But they want to jump the boat. They want to. I don't know how to say this. Um, they, they haven't come into a relationship with Jesus. But because they see what's going on in that Jewish part. They're following it. Now, they're like the sons of Sceva. Because if they go to pray or, or cast out a demon in the name of Jesus, the demon's going to look and say, but Jesus, I know. I know. But who are you? And they're going to jump on. They're going to they're gonna try. Remember when uh, a demon tries to come out, when it tries to come onto a person, it tries to establish contact even. You ever saw where a preacher is preaching and he's trying to cast out a demon and the thing will, like the person who's filled with the spirit latches on, latches on. Why? And if they latch on or they try to fight or if they're seeing Jesus in there and if that person is standing bold enough, because perfect love casts out fear. What is that? Like they, they went preach they went praying for this guy, the sons of Skiva. But what happened to them? The man jumped on them. <laughs> the demon was supposed to jump out and they yeah, stripped them naked and beat them. So what what was supposed to happen? Demons are supposed to come out and flee because Jesus they know. Remember when they said Ah, what have we to do with you, son of God? Remember when they said that? Our time has not yet come. When he was speaking to them and he said, shut up and come out of him. That is our conversation with demons. Shut up and come out of him in Jesus' name. This morning I was praying for someone and he, the demon was rising up in him. So he stood there. And I'm trying to rebuke the thing, but he's running, he's running away, just before Pastor Connor came. And I said, yeah, it's a blood, it's a blood that's against you. And he just, his eyes went open wild crazy and he ran down the, the corridor. <laughs> he ran down the corridor. So, um, okay, they know, they know where you stand. Because remember, it's spirit. Spirit recognizes spirit. They are of the dark. They are in darkness. Jesus is the light. When he comes, something has to happen. The light will dispel the darkness. Oh, amen. So he said, remember when he said, by this you shall know them. They, um, if you believe if, if they believe, or if you believe, they'll cast out demons. To, well, where's that list? Where's that list? They will heal the sick. They will cast out demons. At the end of Mark. No? Mark 16, 17. So this is what we're looking for. It says in verse 16, 18, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Baptized how? But well, Jesus said, by the water and by the spirit. You gotta be born again. And it says, but whoever does not believe will be what? Condemned. What in the world? The grapes jumping up? It's alive. <laughs> Whoever does not believe will be 
condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They'll drive out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will, why did he mention poison? Because remember this man in Guyana? Joe, what is his name? Jim Joe, Joe Jones. Jones. Jim Jones, Jim Jones, yeah, him. <laughs> remember when he was leading the congregation and he said, oh, Jesus is coming back. And what happened? He made them drink um, Kool-Aid mixed with poison and killed 900 of them. Huh? Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you, Abba. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> These things are honey. Okay. Thou shalt not steal. It doesn't matter if I look there. It's your hand there. Okay, so remember when he he mixed that Kool-Aid and he poisoned it and he had the whole congregation drink it? But what happened? Did he live? Did he live? Did he live? He died. He died. And Jesus said, and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They'll drive out demons. Some pastors and preachers, they have conversations with demons like if they're their long-time buddies. Those are familiar spirits. They know the spirit under which they are operating and they talk back. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave right now. Shut up and come out. That's, right. That's the conversation. And they will speak in your tongues and they'll pick up snakes in their hands and drink any deadly poison. So Jim Jones was one, and it will not harm them. They'll lay their hands on the sick, and they will be made well. Again, let's see if there's anything else to continue. And then he went up, right? Remember he said, it's expedient that I go away, that the comforter will come, the teacher, the, the healer, the the Holy Spirit, the gift, which is He Himself in the Spirit. But I said it's expedient that I go away, that He comes. Because now that you've got, you've got, He's planted the seed. He's planted the seed and He's given all things into our hands. Now He can come. He can, He can be, He can go back as God and dwell amongst us and we will connect with it we don't have to see him to know that he's there now he tells us that even though you don't see me no i'm there just as you have believed him believed in my presence even more so in my absence Philippians 2.12 Okay. I don't remember music one. Philippians 2 verse 11 to 13. <clears throat> alignment. Check this alignment. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and every knee will bow, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation. But what about the grace gospel now? What's the grace gospel? You didn't hear about it? The grace gospel is we're saved by grace, right? So we can receive that. We can be washed by the blood of Jesus and go back sinning into the world. I don't see that here. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, walk in a manner that is worthy of your salvation. 
Jesus came to save from sin, from evil. So it's not that we do business as usual when we receive Christ. It's not that we, we go back into the thing that we came from. We're not going to be like a, a washed pig or so going back into the mud, rolling again and washed again and rolling back in the mud or like a dog that has vomited and eats his vomit. Father says, no, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Why does he say work it out? You know why? He did the, he did, he, he finished it. It is finished. No, we are, we're not finished here. We are still alive. Now we have to show the works that he did in us. We have to be as he was when he was here. The Bible says Satan believes that there is a God. Even the devil believes that there is a God. Alignment, one, 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 one. Okay, give me a second. Let me find that. I'm trembling. Uh -huh. James 2, 19. James 2, 19, reading from verse 18 to 20. And it says, But someone will say, You have faith, and I have deeds. That is what's going on. You have faith, and I have deeds. You believe, and I do. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that God is one. Good for you. Even the devils believe that. Even the demons believe that. And shudder or tremble. Oh foolish man. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is worthless? Give me an example. Wasn't our father Abraham justified by... Remember we looked at Abraham going with Isaac on the mountain and he said, yes, Lord, I'll give you my son. But he don't really... If he didn't prepare the altar and, and prepare to slay Isaac, then he wouldn't have done nothing. It's like saying, yes, Lord, I believe in you, but continue to walk in the ways of the world. Then what is that? That is dead faith. That faith is dead. Faith without works is dead. It's dead because the Bible says that the mind of the flesh is death. So if you receive Jesus and you continue in the ways of the world, you're walking by the, the flesh. If you receive Jesus and you're walking by the spirit, you are very much alive. Because Jesus is the one who's doing the work in you, in your mind, in your heart. He is quickening you to go by the spirit. Amen. So we're looking at, what was that thing? Luke. Luke. Luke 10, 20. So when he said, nevertheless, don't rejoice that the Spirit submit to you. This is not really you. No, you're a vessel that the Spirit of God is using. It's to God be the glory. To God be the honor. To God be the praise. It's not you that the demons are running from. They're running from he who is greater in you than he who is outside. Now, they're, they're seeing Jesus inside. And they're fearful of that. Amen? They're fearful of that. Now, Satan is outside. And he's outside a lot of things. He's outside of heaven. He's outside. He's outside a lot of things. He's in the world. And the Bible says that we should overcome him. We must stand in the light. We must stand in the truth. So now we're continuing to read Luke 10, verse 19 to 21. Reading verse 21 now. Or verse 20 to 21. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the demons submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven, that at that time Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and declared, 
He rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? He catch any power. <laughs> He's got the overwhelming joy. He's speaking in tongues. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Of course, yeah, boy, a punch. Uh-huh. Hey, you go over there. I will buy someone already. I'll just put it in the fridge. Okay. At that time, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and declared, I praise you, Father. And this is where people say, oh, he's talking to his Father. He's doing it for our sake. That voice didn't need to speak at his baptism, but it spoke for our sake. So the demons were cast out. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Father. Flesh praising the sovereign spirit. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Because you've hidden these things from the wise and the learned. If you think you are, if you think you are wise in your own eyes, no. Okay? And reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was well pleasing in your sight. What is he doing? I'm telling you what he's doing. He's pulling down exaltation and he's bringing the humility. He's pulling down all the exaltation of men, of I pleasers, and he's bringing the glory and the honor and the praise back to where it belongs. Worthy. Who is worthy? God alone. Okay. Let me wrap this up now. Get ready. Um, wow, we're going a good bit. Okay. Um, what did we read? Okay, so it's itching ears. People want, they want some truth. They don't want all truth. They want to be comfortable in the world and comfortable with God. It's like um, uh, lukewarm. See that? See how that works? That's not good. Second Timothy 4 3. Reading from verse 2 to 4. And it says, Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season at all times. Reprove, rebuke, and encourage with every form of patient instruction. That's my phone. Oh, that's you. For the time will come when men will not tolerate strong, do sound doctrine, but with itching ears, they will gather around themselves teachers. Itching ears to suit their own desires. There it is in the Bible, Second Timothy four, verse three, and verse four now. So they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myth. They want to hear things that are not going to happen. Now, remember where the Bible says, um, I lost it. Oh, right. Where the Bible says, their hearts are like callous and their eyes, they close their eyes. This is what it's talking about, 2 Timothy 4, 3. And then, now I've got to find this thing where it says, the street, um, what is called beauty. Amen. One is called beauty. Isaiah 52, verse 1. Awaken, awaken, clothe yourself with strength, O Zion. Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem, holy city. What is the garments of Jerusalem? What is the garments of the bride? Put on your righteousness. Let him dwell in you. Let him dwell in your heart. Let him re renew your mind. Let him take over your spirit. 
Let him lead you in the way he shows you. Okay, and it says, Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem, holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean will not again enter you. Remember in the beginning when we were doing the cleansing? Remember the cleansing that was going on in the temple? In the mount? We were doing the cleansing. Now it's a lot of cleansing going on. And here's what he says. Shake off your dust. Rise up and sit on your throne, O Jerusalem. Why shake off your dust? Where is she? She is lamenting. She's mourning. She's crying for the abominations being done. Shake off the dust and rise up and sit on your throne, Jerusalem. Remove the chains from your neck, O daughter, O captive daughter, Zion. Why? Now Jesus came to loose the captives and set them free. Amen? Deliverance has come. Salvation has come. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I've longed to gather you, but you will not come. They want a king, but they don't want the king that is the king of kings, God Almighty. They want a savior, but they don't want the righteousness part. They want to do what they want. God doesn't want that. He says, it's time for the glory to go back to who? The one who it belongs and of course, those people who are lifting him up, you got to lift him up. Give him all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. If you're a apostle, a bishop, a pastor, if you're a preacher, a teacher, if you are <clears throat> whatever you are, doesn't matter what you are, you stand there and say, I am dust, and his presence fills me. And without his presence, I am nothing but dust. So all, he, all the glory belongs to him. Everything that's done here, it belongs to him. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. And that's what Jesus is trying to open the eyes of the disciples to see. Amen? Um, we're looking at... Why am I frozen? said do not be an eye pleaser of men we don't want the praises of men we want god amen ephesians 6 6 slaves obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and sincerity of heart just as you would show to christ and do this not only to please them while they are watching anybody could be honest in front of a crowd but true honesty comes when the crowd is not there Amen. But as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart, walk in integrity, serve with goodwill as to the Lord and not to men. Serve with goodwill as to the Lord and not to men. Amen. I got six minutes left. Matthew 23, verse 7. Now, why does the Bible say serve with, serve, serve with a will to God and not to men? From the sanctuary of God starting. They love to be called titles. They love to be esteemed higher. Oh, you know why? It's because of this. The flesh and all looking in. Matthew 23, 7. As long as we're in the flesh, we will be at enmity with God. We'll always do something that is against us, which is sad. That's why he's coming to give us our glorified body. That's another sermon, but when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, and they chose to disobey. Well, they chose to disobey. So if they had eaten from the tree, they would have remained in that state. But us, as we choose to obey, as we receive grace, as we, we are washed by the blood, filled with the Spirit, I choose to do good, choose to do to the glory of God. When he puts on that glorious, oh, the corruptible must put on incorruption, mortal, immortality. We'll be like that. We'll be like the angels. 
submitted to his will, loving his will, adoring him. You know, like that. Beautiful revelation. Oh, I did that sermon. Ah, even so now, the corruptible must put on incorruptible. Okay, Matthew 23, 7. Let's tie it up. They love the places of honors at banquets and chief seats in synagogues. The greetings in the marketplaces and the title of teacher or rabbi, rabbi, by which they are addressed. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. He goes on to say, he speaks a little more. And do not, verse 9, and do not call anyone on earth your father, for you have one father who is in heaven. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for you have one father who is in heaven. Amen. So we don't give what the glory that belongs to God, because he's a father of all, in all, through all, above all, for all. He is, he is the father of creation. When we say father, he hears us. If we, if we go on calling everyone father, you know, like, which one are you talking to? We say father in heaven. Now we say father in heaven. Amen? Like Jesus taught us to pray. Because everybody called everybody father. Everybody called everybody daddy or father. So, anyway, he showed us how. He said, our father, which art in heaven. So, father is showing us that we need to take our eye, take the eyes off of us and put them on him. In the things that we do, God is to be exalted. God is to be glorified, and he will be glorified. Amen? He will be glorified. He will be honored. And you gotta, you don't want to be called one who's robbing God. So, just like he said in the beginning, start from the sanctuary. Cleanse from the sanctuary. That's exactly where we need to cleanse. From the church onwards. Why? Why? Because the church is supposed to be a spiritual house. It's the house of prayer. And you made it into a den of thieves. And God does not like that. Amen? So when he tells the disciples, don't, don't rejoice that the demons are subjected to you. No. Rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because all of us are sinners saved by God's grace. Not all of us are following onto his path. Because when you love someone, you will not do constantly what hurts them. You don't want to be that pig that gets washed and rolls in the mud again, and it gets washed and runs in the mud and runs and washed and washed and runs. And... No! The Bible says, do not trample upon God. Do not trample upon the Son of God, upon his blood. Instead of two and three witnesses, if, if somebody died on the account of two and three witnesses, how much more for the atoning blood of Christ, for those who trample on his blood or something like that? I hear Hebrews are going there. Hebrews 10, 29. Reading from verse 28 to 30. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on a testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think one deserves to be punished 
who has trampled on the Son of God. Profaned the blood of the covenant that sanctified him and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. So again, God is bringing the glory back to his throne. His people who will dwell in Jerusalem. Remember where he, he brought them where he brought them back. He's bringing them back. Now, Jerusalem even is where we dwell. Jerusalem would be, well, it's not like the physical Jerusalem, just like it's the physical Israel only. It's also where you're rising up with the truth. Wherever you are, you're rising up with the truth to lift the banner. Even though they hate you, that's okay. You're lifting the banner, okay? The banner for what? His name, the Lord, our righteousness. And Father is saying today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. But let this word sink in. That whatever he's using us to do, it's to his glory. It's him at work in us, not we ourselves. We are to get no glory. We're going to be glorified in him. Don't worry about that. He's taking care of that. We just have to... We just have to be about Father's business. We just have to be about Father's business. We just have to be about souls and saving souls, getting, doing His work, setting the captives free, bringing sight to the blind, preaching the truth, just giving testimony, and just loving our Father in the way that we're made. Because we're going to be like that for eternity. We're going to love on him for eternity. Amen. So, no one can steal what God has given. Why? Because like the sons of Sceva, they tried to do it. And look what happened. They were not filled. They were proclaiming the name. But, but they were not filled with. They said, whom Paul knows. Not whom we know. Whom Paul knows. This is a difference. Whom Paul knows. The one who Paul knows. Yeah, that, that one. you got to have your private testimony of God and rise up in this hour. Amen? So, God bless you, beloved. I hope that you... I hope that you received something from this. I hope it was encouraging to your spirit. I hope that um, a word is hidden in your heart to walk in the straight a narrow path. And... Um, I'll see you at home again later, yeah? God bless you. Jesus loves you. Let's pray and let's thank him. Father, we just thank you, Abba Father, that you've taken us through a study of, of being humble, even as we do things for you, Father. Even if it's casting out a demon, if it's healing the sick, if it's prophesying, if it's teaching, to be humble, Father, and to just give you all the glory in all things, Father. We thank you, Abba Father, you're straightening the path that was made crooked by the enemy, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that we're fearless and we're rising in you, Father. The truth, the way, and the life to lift up your name higher still, that your glory would be lifted higher still, that you be glorified even greater still, Father. Father, we love you. You're our Holy Father in heaven, Father. We love you in a holy and precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, God bless you, beloved. I am four minutes overboard. Oops. Okay, that's okay. God bless you in Jesus' name. In his name. Bye for now. Brother Mark and Sister Sharon and Gary and Raju and Joey and everybody else who would come. In Jesus' name. God bless you.